I'm wondering what you, what the group's experience has been in terms of uh, learners requesting privacy for uh, for their sessions. Yeah. Um, confidentiality is paramount for what we do. Um, there was a program in the Central Valley that had a big, huge celebration party, and they invited all of their tutors and their learners and all of these prominent city people who turned out to be employers of students who didn't know that their employees didn't know how to read. So that's my plug for be really careful about how you bring people together. Um, but everything that, in, that happens in our office is completely confidential. And we do have you know, the library conference room and the friends areas and things like that that people can meet in. We have a couple tutor learner pairs that confidentiality is a big issue with them. And they actually, both of them actually meet at the workplace. They, one of them meets at the tutor's workplace and the other is at the, well, they're both at the tutor workplaces. And they meet there after, after hours because they don't want to come to the library. So they meet it on site at their tutor's job. Okay, um, is anyone doing pairs? So if you have not a lot of tutors, like we don't have a lot of tutors right now, is anyone <coughs> pairing up similar students and working pairs? Trina? Like yes, a small group. but very carefully. Um, the students have to be very comfortable with each other. We have a couple of groups of friends that are meeting with a single tutor, but I would never put two strangers together with a tutor just because you don't know what their background and their levels and things like that are. Um, we do offer some small group things that people know is going to be, you know, coming into, but for the most part it's one-on-one -on -one or a few two-on-ones. We actually have one tutor who's meeting in a neighborhood and she started tutoring her neighbor and then the neighbor on the other side and now there's three or four neighbors that come over and they, Carla, cover your ears, they meet in her house um, and... <laughs> But they're neighbors. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so like it, I said, it's sticky. The, the requirement is is only be, it's a liability issue. Yeah. That's what it is. It's just a matter of being safe and not putting yourself, your program, or your library in any situation. I'm not going to come check where they meet. I just was going to say I had to address that recently because one of our tutors kept meeting and you know I knew she was meeting in the home when I found out I knew she, um, I told them again this is not good and sent it had sent it you know to every 120 tutors that we have and several tutors came in and thanked me for sending that out and reminding them and we tell the learners as well because they've been started they get asked sometimes well can you come to my home I can't drive today my husband can't take me you know my child's sick for whatever reason and they were happy to have that reinforcement that it is for everyone's safety that we just meet in in the public place so they did appreciate that great here's a question over here going back to the question of confidentiality um, we're trying to look at using more volunteers for things like data entry and setting up those <coughs> but the question has come from other staff members we haven't done it before um, is there anything formal you use or is it mostly choosing the volunteers you know well and having that discussion about confidential information or is it a formal you know thing that you have in place since we s rely so heavily on volunteers we do have a confidentiality um, disclosure that they have to sign mm -hmm. same here yeah, we have a tutors uh, agreement that covers all of those things 